Hey everybody, uh, how's it going? You guys doing okay? Um, yeah, I don't even know what day it is. Uh, day eight, I think. I think it's day eight, pretty sure. Uh, yeah, things are progressing along. Um, can't complain. I woke up this morning uh, with some red eye. Uh, kind of resembles pink eye a little bit without the gooky stuff coming out. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, it's not as bad as it was, but whatever. Uh, so yes, today is day eight. And uh, I'm going to call this... Uh, Uh, let me see day let me see um so i was thinking about uh, eyesight obviously with the the red eye thing and uh i was thinking about paul and the conversion on damascus and so he's walking along and like a normal joe and all of a sudden bam and uh he's like yeah and uh he has a conversation with jesus on the road to damascus and uh, Paul is blinded by this, by this light. Uh, and scripture says that it was uh, kind of like a scales covered his eyes, uh, preventing him from being able to see. I was thinking about the importance of that, not just the fact that he was blinded, but why was he blinded? Uh, one, he, he could have just been, have a conversation and, off you go uh, but no there's a there's a very important reason uh, that he was blinded Paul would have been around for a while obviously Paul was uh, probably there uh, during the stoning of Stephen um, uh, he probably knew uh, of Christ he probably even at some point in time saw Jesus speak. Uh, that would not be uh, unheard of to think that who Paul was, Saul at the time, that he uh, he knew of Christ's miracles. He knew what he was doing. Uh, and he, he saw these things probably firsthand. Uh, he probably knew of the feeding of the masses um, and whatnot. He may have even been there when uh, Christ was crucified. We don't know exactly where he was or what his location was. But what we do know is despite everything he saw, uh, despite everything that he knew and, and he witnessed, um, whether it be uh, himself or whether it be uh, secondhand from somebody else that he was close to, uh, he knew the works of Christ. So he, he knew who Jesus Christ was. And yet he still decided to take it upon himself to uh, hunt down and destroy members of the way. Uh, it, it reminds me very much of Darth Vader, uh, where uh, he's like, you know what? I'm going to hunt down. I'm going to destroy every last one of them. Uh, I'm going to eradicate the way from the face of the earth. There, there's not going to be anybody when I'm done with them. So he goes on this very uh, angry, uh, very uh, Sith kind of uh, man hunt, man and woman hunt. Uh, but in essence, he was blind. Uh, his anger against them, his his thoughts against them uh, were very much blinding to the truth. And essentially that's what happens is uh, there's a reason that he was, uh, that Christ chose to blind him. And then when the uh, scales were removed, he would be able to see the truth. And I think we're all that way. Uh, we all live in uh, a darkness. Sometimes it's a darkness of our own choice. Sometimes we've chosen to not uh, walk the righteous path. Sometimes, uh, sometimes that path is before us out of ignorance. But either way, 
we're still very much blind. And without, uh, without that change, without that physical change, whether it be, uh, whether it be something that comes into your life that's uh, life altering. Uh, a lot of times, uh, people who get sick sometimes they they change things. Sometimes a near death uh, uh, incident changes things, and, and it gets people to move from their their sinful ways. Um, unfortunately, sometimes that path is only fleeting. Uh, sometimes people uh, turn to God because they are desperate, and then once everything is good. Uh, they don't hold up their end of the bargain. Oh my God, if you just get me out of this, I swear I will never have another drink as long as I live. God gets them out of it, and then all of a sudden, right back to it. So it's one of those things that we need to be sure we understand what it is to see. The gift of sight is a blessing, uh, a blessing that not everybody has, but in order to be able to truly see, in order to be able to see, we need to be able to say we see as Christ sees. Now, is it going to be perfect? No, of course not. But we need to be able to look at a situation and we need to be able to say, okay, what is the secular worldview of this situation? What does the world say about this? What does this culture say about this? What, what, what have I been, what does my worldview say about this? Everything we see, everything we do, whether it be who we vote for, whether it be how we believe a situation, uh, the coronavirus, for instance, a lot of people are like, oh, this and that and blah, 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 and conspiracy theories up and down. But ultimately, you have to be able to say, okay, this is my worldview on this topic. What is your worldview on politics? What is your worldview on t hot button topics like abortion or gun control or, uh, or immigration or socialism for that matter? What does your worldview say? More importantly, you need to look at whatever your worldview is and you need to find out if it holds up to scripture. It doesn't matter what your opinion is. It doesn't matter what your sight is. It matters God's opinion because God wrote it down. God gave us the Bible so that way we could look at our lives and we could say, okay, we need a roadmap. How do we get through this thing alive, right? Because at the end, we have a choice. Salvation is truly a choice whether we see ourselves and we want to live the, the sinful nature, the, uh, live within the world's secular view, or whether we want to live God's way. Either way, we have a choice. That choice is ours to make, good or evil. People aren't necessarily just good or evil. There is both inside of us, as Sirius Black would say. You're not just a, a, you know, a, a death eater or not, right? You're... You have a choice. Every action we make has consequences. Good, bad, indifferent, whatever. There's always consequences. Our worldview, how we see things, our life is based on our perspective. Our perspective is based on what we see. Do we pray that God open our eyes to show us his way? Are we praying to God every day that says, God, just let me see things the way you do? Let me, let me change the way that I'm doing things. Let me walk away from the sinful life. Let me walk away from the lust of the flesh. Let me walk away from that alcoholic drink that's causing me problems. Let me walk away from this addiction. Let me walk away from uh, my, my work life that is just causing me so much strife and causing me pain at home and I'm not the father I should be or I'm not the mother I should be or I'm not the, the son I should be because of X, Y, Z. Whatever we are, whatever we're doing, we have to be able to open our eyes. We have to be able to remove the world's influence on what the world tells us we should feel. Because the world is telling us how we should feel. It tells us this is right, this is wrong. 
and the world has not maintained the same answer for the last couple decades, a couple more than a couple decades. What the world has been telling us that we need to believe has been changing, it's been growing, it's been evolving. And it becomes more and more sinful, less, less and less Christ-like. But we need to be able to open our eyes and we need to be able to say, okay, I support this party. Is this party doing things the way that God would want them to be doing them? What things are being done? What things are being done in school? What is being done in your own home? Are you the father you should be based on scripture? Are you the wife you should be based on scripture? What about the children? What about all those people who live in nursing homes whose kids are nowhere to be around? There's a lot of things that we can look at and no matter what we're looking at in our lives, we need to be able to say, okay, God, open my eyes. Show me what it is that you have for me today. Show me how I can be better today. And the only way to do that is to be willing to allow Christ to open your eyes, to show you his way, to reveal to you the revelation of Jesus Christ. And the only way to do that is to have a relationship with him. The only way to have a relationship with him is to have a relationship with your Bible. You need to be able to open your Bible and you need to be able to read and you need to be able to, to compare worldview, God's view. And if the things that you think are okay really sit in the world view, I challenge you to really look at those things and make a decision about how you see things, what you see. Changing a world view doesn't happen overnight. Just like the relationship with God isn't cultivated overnight. But it is something that we have to work at. It's something we have to do every day. We're gonna fall, we're gonna stumble, we're gonna make mistakes. But every day we get a new opportunity to make it right. Every day we get an opportunity to hold ourselves to a higher standard. And we Christians must be held accountable for our, our worldview and what we deem is okay. Just as Paul wrote to the church in Galatia saying, whoa, 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 Y'all, that, that's not, no, that's not what Christ said. And he was correcting them because it was a Jesus plus one. And a lot of us have this worldview of we need Christ, but also this. Make sure that your worldview is a Christ-centered view. Make sure you're not allowing the world to add different flavors, different colors to your vision. Make sure you're staying focused on the cross. I hope I see you guys again tomorrow. I hope everybody is healthy. I look forward to wrapping up these next few days here in this wonderful establishment that I have called home for almost two weeks. Keep sharing the blog, blog, whatever. Uh, hit like, subscribe, share. And I just hope you guys have enjoyed these as much as I've enjoyed doing them for you. And just remember the glory of God. Everything that we do should bring glory to the Father. I'll see you guys soon. Love you guys.